with you. Let's pray. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Um, we're going to finish up the message from this past week. Just want to share briefly there. Then we're going to pick up and allow God to move and have his way. But as you go there, let me take a moment to pray that God would just set the ground. And then we're going to talk through a few of the things that the Lord has laid on my heart to encourage us to be who he would have us to be. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for you. We thank you for your word, Lord. We, you're welcome here, God. We got the message loud and clear in the worship experience, Lord, that you're here with us. So as we open our hearts, um, speak to us through the word, Lord. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for what you're doing. Make us more like you as a church that we've been for several months now talking about becoming a house of prayer. And we've been on this series. So, Lord, speak to our hearts this morning to change us, to mold us, to motivate us to be more like you. So as I speak, I pray for soundness of speech, clarity of mind, and most of all, understanding that our congregation can apply the truths of your word. So open our hearts to hear. Have your way in our midst. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Now do me a favor as we go to the word. Turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, prayer changes things. Tell the other neighbor that. Come on, say, other neighbor. Prayer changes things. Amen. So let me do a, a little bit of a review um, because I'm going to be in the same passage today, uh, but just take things, just twist to it a little bit. Uh, here's the big idea of what we shared to you with you uh, last week is that when praying, we need to learn how to make the adjustment to God's will. Very, very important. Now, I just need to say this. If you are not a Wednesday night uh, person to come out on Wednesday night, I want to challenge you if you want deeper in God. If you notice that your spiritual journey has been stagnated, you need to go more. I'm going to challenge you to come out because on Wednesdays we have some beneath the ocean conversations, amen? And it's very challenging and it's very life-changing and transformative. And more importantly, we begin that service with prayer. So if we're going to be a house of prayer, uh, we are, the expectation is that we come out and we cry out to God in prayer. So make sure you mark that and be a part of what God would have us to make sure you come out. So here's a few things that I shared with you. We're having some challenges back there. Just focus on the side screen while they work that out. Four things, four things that I share with you as it relates to what Matthew says here in Matthew chapter 26, verses 32, 44. Here's the four things I shared with you last week that I want you to get a feel of. Number one is that if we're going to go to God in prayer, we need to know who is in our inner circle. All right? Come on, repeat at me. Say, self, yeah. know who's in my inner circle. And here's what that means. You need to know who you can count on to pray for you, count on to intercede with you, count on to get you to that place where you can cry out to God and allow God just to speak more heartily and in depth with you. And then the second thing that's very, very important that we must make sure we lock into our spirit is okay to be human when it comes to prayer. I need a couple of people to say amen on that. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be human. And let me tell you what I mean by that. If, if you're going through something that, that you need to, to lay your spirituality down or whatever you need to lay down so you can get transparent and naked and authentic with God, he gives us permission to do that. Because we looked at that with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And if you missed that message, I want to encourage you to make sure you go um, to our, our YouTube channel, uh, iTunes, wherever you need to go and listen to that. Then the next thing I saw, we saw the third thing, was our relationship with the Father. It empowers us to pray for the desires of our heart. And here's the caveat, providing we submit our desires to God's will. Amen? You can ask him for whatever you want. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the earth is his, the fullness of it, the world and everything that dwells there, it belongs to him. But whatever we request, make sure we say, God, if it's your will. You kind of get what I'm saying? Because somebody in here might be paying, praying for a pinto. Y'all don't know what that is. Amen. Yeah, y'all, some of y'all, y'all explain that to the young people. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he, but he might have a Cadillac for you. You kind of get what I'm saying? Some of us had one of them. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but he might have more for you. So, so I always say, God, if, 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 if whatever it is you have in store for me is more than my request, 
cancel my request. Amen. <laughs> I always say that. So that's why I say, Lord, your will be done, not mine. And then finally, the more important thing is that once God answers our prayers, our responsibility is to execute his will. Make the adjustment to his will and execute his will. Very, very important that we not miss that. As we make the transition today, I want now, last week we spent all the attention focusing on Jesus and how Jesus prayed in that garden of Gethsemane, how he poured his heart out, how he cried out to God, and we, we extracted those four principles from it. Today, I want to focus on, on you, and I want to focus on me by looking at those disciples to see the charge and the command that God has given us to pray. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to focus on this thought, watch and pray. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on, turn to the person next to you and say, hey, person, whatever you do, watch and pray. Yeah. Now tell them this. Make sure you say this. Say, don't give up. Yeah. And say, don't get tired. This is going to make sense. But watch and pray. You kind of get it? Yeah. We have to learn to watch and pray. Um, there, there was a song. That I don't know if some of y'all are old enough to know this, but I, I kind of capture the words. Listen to this real quick. Um, I used to know this by heart. There's a long that say, song that says, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart with love and wrote my name. Y'all know this? Above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Y'all know that one? Yeah, some of the young folk don't know that. Then here's how the second verse. Now, uh, I may have doubt and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I can hear that country with Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Y'all know that? I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Y'all know that? Here we go. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by it. And he will hear a little. Y'all know that? Now we'll know a little fire's burden. Let us have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. I can tell, I can tell who just got saved. <laughs> and who been saved when Jesus died on Calvary from that song. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Old saints, come on, y'all. Amen. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff we grew up on. Amen. And, and here's what the song is saying. Here's what the song is saying, right? That when we find ourselves in difficulties and challenges and turmoils, all we got to do is have a conversation with Jesus. And it'll make everything all right. Just, just a little talk, right? Just a little talk. Just, Lord, here I am. I remember when you read the one on Gethsemane, there was a song that says, I came to the garden alone. Y'all remember that one? While the dew was still on the roses. Anybody been saved that long? Yeah? And the joy we hear as we tarry there. Oh, y'all, yeah. Yeah, there we go. None other. Yeah, I get it. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me, yeah. Yeah, that's when saints used to pray. Yeah. <laughs> that's when saints, those are songs when saints used to pray, used to cry out to God. And they understood the importance of what it meant to watch and to pray and to be who God would have us to be. Well, as we look at this text that's in front of you, it's the same text that we saw last week. But I want to back up a little bit. And I just want to point out a fallacy that exists within the text that Jesus warned his disciples about that they neglected and they missed the warning. And my caution is, is that I think that he is doing the same warning to us. Unless we are not careful and cautious, we too may miss the warning that Jesus is trying to give us. And the result will be we end up failing him in the, 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 at the worst or the most inopportune moment. If you look at this text, back up with me to verse 30. And when you go to verse 30, let me just kind of narrate and then I'm going to read a couple of things and then we're going to talk to it. Here's what it says um, at verse 30. This is after the Lord's Supper. He had just completed fellowshipping with his disciples. And then it's verse 30 opens up by saying, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And here's what I said to you last week. 
It was on that journey going to the Mountain of Olives where the Garden of Gethsemane was located that Jesus had this conversation with his disciples. Here's what he says in verse 31. It says here, Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. And then he puts this clause, Because of meat this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Look at verse 33. Then Peter answered him, Lord, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, even if I must die, um, even if I must die, he says, I will not deny you. And listen to all the disciples. And all the disciples said the same, yea, 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 not me. I want you to hang your hat on this thought. As believers, failure on our part, it discredits the name of Jesus in the earth. I want, you to, I want you to process that just for a little while. As we kind of, I'm going I'm to give you some context, and I'll put some flesh around that so you can get what I'm saying. When we fail, we discredit the name of Christ in the earth realm. The challenge that I want you to hear me say going into this is Jesus has already told us what we need to do so we don't fail, but because we think we're all that. Can we have that conversation, right? And we tell ourselves who we are, and we tell ourselves how solid we are, and we tell ourselves how much we do what we do. We don't even realize what we're doing, and we miss the command that Jesus is saying. Look at this text. Three years these 11 guys walked with Jesus. And the reason I'm saying 11, because by this time, Jesus, Judas had already signed up, said, take my name off the roll. I'm not in like that. Come on, are you with me? And he unplugged to go do his own thing to kind of start a business venture of deceiving or de deceiving people, thought he was going to make a business investment with his 30 pieces of silver. So now, as Judas has made his exit, Jesus now is going to Gethsemane with the remainder of his disciples. Now listen to how I'm going to say this. You guys, he's talking to them, you've been with me for three years, and yet... You've shown commitment. You've shown dedication. You've shown who you are. You've shown the fact that you're on here. But, but listen to me. We're about to enter a situation that's really going to test the veracity or the truthfulness of your, your, your commitment, your faithfulness, your followership of me. You're about to go through something that's going to let you know who you really are. I can say, God, I love you while I'm not tested. Can we go there? And it's easy for me to follow God as long as I'm not being tested. Come on, y'all. When the bills are paid and the, the spouse is acting right and everything is on tack and the job, I'm getting a paycheck every two weeks and I know I can blow it, but I'm getting the next one in. When everything is okay, I'm okay following God while I'm not being tested. Don't miss this. Here's what he says. Here, look at verse 30. When they sung unto him, they went out, verse 31. Then Jesus initiates the dialogue and he says to them this way, you, not one, but all of you will fall away, and then he puts the phrase, because of me. Now, you're probably wondering, if, if I'm the 11, Jesus, what's, what's this? Yeah, what's up with that, right? And then, here, I want you to hear the depth of what they heard, because when you look at the Greek word that's translated um, fall away, it's the word skandaleo, right? And what that word literally means is that y'all are about to sin, You're about to 
apostize there I use that word to be an apostate that means you're going to disown me you're going to disclaim me you, you kind of get where I'm going right and, and and the importance what's nuanced in that statement there is that whenever I am disclaiming and discrediting the name of God I am placing the enemy in a place where he ought not be because I'm saying God is not able to do what God said he can do And then, I love the text because it didn't say, you know, Bartholomew, it's you because Judas spoke to you and I knew he said something to you. Or he's not saying, Andrew, it's you. Or he's, he's not saying this. He's saying all of you. And the reason I like the fact that he's saying all of you is if I would have transfer that application today, he's talking to me. <laughs> I like that. He's not all y'all. <laughs> all us up in here. You kind of get where I'm going, right? And the problem, the problem is some of you, like the disciples, are sitting here saying, not me. Oh, come on, let's be honest this morning. Some of us, Pastor Derek, are sitting here saying, just like the disciples, not me. And then look at what he says. Here's the reason you're going to fall away. It's not so much because of you, but it's because of me. It's because of who I am and what God has sent me to do and, and my purpose in the earth realm to redeem man and to restore them and to bring them back into a relationship with God. And I need you all to understand that the reason you're going to fall away is not so much because of what you've done, because you may think the devil is after you. He's not really after you. He's after me. And he can't really get to me because of who I am. So the only way he can get to me is to go through you. I wish I had somebody in here. So I need you to get your heads on right because you're going to fall away because he's trying to get to me and he's going to use you to discredit my name. They understood that. They, they spoke the language, the Aramaic at the time. They, they spoke the language so they understood, right? And look at this. I love this. I love this. And he says, he says he gives this scripture, um, this prophecy from Zechariah, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep flock will be scattered, right? This is speaking to the Old Testament prophet um, passage in Zechariah chapter 13 where the prophecy was given when Israel was in a, a disobedient state that the leadership would be hit and then the, 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 tribe, the tribes would be dispersed into the northern and so southern kingdom and they would fall into Babylonian captivity, right? So he goes after the leadership and the people end up being dispersed. Now watch this. And then, and then when he says this, this slide, but after verse 32, I am raised, I'll go before you in Galilee. They missed that. Peter said this. Watch, watch Peter, watch Peter. Though they all fall away because of you. Third person, plural. Hold up, Jesus. Don't forget, flesh and blood didn't reveal to me who I am, I pray three times a day. So Andrew, Bartholomew, Simon, James, John, come on, y'all. Them there, flesh and blood ain't revealed nothing to them yet. <laughs> I need to say it that way because somebody in here is saying, I know what I do. I know what they do, but I know who I am. Somebody is setting themselves outside the bounds of the applications of this message right now, but I need you to get back in the box with everybody else. <laughs> you kind of get where I'm going? I want us all to be in this box together this morning. You kind of get what I'm saying? It, it doesn't matter what you do, who you are, how long you've been saved. <laughs> We're all in this thing, and he's speaking. And Peter says this. Peter says this. Though they deny you, they fall away, he says. Where's that? What verse is that? He says, um... Verse 34, um, no, verse 33, though they fall away, I will never, skandileo is the Greek word, abandon you. And Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, first person singular. No, I ain't talking to them because they ain't acting as holy as you pretending to be right now. <laughs> that before... The rooster does what? You will deny me how many times? And look at, listen to Peter, 35. Jesus, you realize what you're saying? 
even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples are like, dang, Peter, that's bold, man. You're going to say all that? Then, then I'll tell you what, we in with you, man. If, you, if you're going to take the hit, we going to take the hit with you. Now, I, I need to make this point very, very, I want to say this one more time. Failure on our part discredits the name of Jesus in the earth. Because here's the problem, here, here's the problem, and here's how that manifests itself. Let me give you this brief application, then we're going to move on real quick. When we deny the name of Christ, here's what the world says. Hypocrites. Can we be honest? And it, it discredits the name of God. Right? And here's the result. People don't come to save in faith or a relationship with God because they're looking at you. They're looking at me. Remember how I said this a couple of minutes ago. The goal of Satan is to prevent Jesus from getting to Calvary. Remember when Jesus said, I must die, and Peter said, there is no way anybody's going to kill you? Listen to Jesus' response. He didn't say, Peter, what are you saying, buddy? He says, get thee behind me, Satan, because he realized that Satan was trying to get through Peter to get to him. I want you all to hear me say this, because what we need to understand is that when we fail, when we blow it, when we mess up, when we don't do what God called us to do, when we don't covenant to remain faithful to God, when we don't know the things we need to do to be faithful to God, we must understand the reason we don't do it is because the enemy has gotten to us to prevent us from doing it, to discredit the name of God. That's different, y'all. That's different. Here's how I said it last week. When God speak, adjust to his will. I will give you, and you're going to get this in a little while, 50 million reasons why I can't do what God wants me to do. And never once will I tell you it's the devil causing me to come up with the excuses. That joker is slick. You guys all right? His goal is to stop Jesus from getting to Calvary. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let me show you the second point because I want to share three things. Okay? So here's the thing. The absence of prayer. I don't like that word positions even though I said it. Guarantees failure. The absence of prayer guarantees failure. So, watch the text. Okay? So look at this real quick. Let me walk you through things. Let me walk this through you. So they, Jesus warns them. Here's what he said. Now, let me give you context. This will make sense now. Hey, we're about to go do something. And you guys are going to fail at what we're about to do. You get it? Y'all get it now? And here's the, without knowing what, the, what they're about to do. No, God, never will we fail you. Peter, Peter, they might fail, but I got this. Jesus, this is, you guys are about to fail. And your failure is going to discredit my name. Look at the text. So then it says here now, verse 36. Then Jesus went to them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciple, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful. How? Even to death. And then here it is. Here's what I need you all to do. Watch with me. You guys get it? Here's what I need you to do. Watch with me. And then verse 39, he goes on and he does what he's going to do. That word watch, don't make the mistake of thinking that he's saying, stand guard, be on the lookout for Roman soldiers, or be on the lookout for Judas. I'm getting ready to go. And I'm going to pour my heart out to God. And I need you all to stand here. And the word literally means to be vigilant, to be on alert, to be spiritual alert, 
we can summarize all that to say, I need you to stay here and pray here while I go over there and pray. Hey, you guys going to fail me in a little while. We ain't going to never fail you. Okay, cool. Let's go do it. Here's your assignment. Then I need you all to pray. This is what, that's what I need you to do. Just watch. Just, just pray. Okay? Just stay here because I need you to partner with me. And I'm comfortable in saying, church, this is where we fail God. This is where we fail God. Right? Because, excuse me for being a little um, challenging this morning, because God has really convicted me on this, and I just want to help us to get to where God would have us to do, because I want this church to be a house of prayer. Are you with me? I want this place to be an impactful place to be all that God would have it to be. So I'm not going to be long. Just a couple of things I want to share. So I want you to come together, and I want you to stay here. And watch this. He didn't just take just Peter, James, and John alone. He brought the whole group with him, all 11. He gave them their assignment, and then he took his inner circle, and he brought his inner circle. And he didn't just say, James, you pray. The rest of y'all do what you need to do. So in other words, he said he called a corporate prayer meeting. Y'all all right? Come on, say, Pastor, we okay so I can know we good. Y'all okay? Okay. He says this, I want you to watch with me. Now, look at the text. Look at the text, right? Look at the text. Let me see if I can walk you through this. Jump down. He goes and he does what he did. We're going to come back to do. And he came to the disciples and he found them doing what? Sleeping, verse 40, and he said to Peter, and I'm, you know, Matthew's rendition, Matthew just sums it up by saying, so could you not watch with me one hour? That's nice. If I'm Jesus, I'm like, you the one had all that mouth. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You kind of get what I'm saying? You the one talking about you're going to die with me. Come on. You the one talking all that crazy stuff. Dude, just one hour, you couldn't stay awake for one hour to intercede on my behalf? Come on now. Peter, James, and John's asleep, right? Then, then I like it. He goes away. Look at verse, uh, he goes in 42. He goes away and he, again. And then he comes back in verse 43. And he came again and he found them doing what? Sleeping. Because they just got off work. <laughs> Their eyes were heavy. You guys okay? They were preoccupied during the day. And when time came for an all night prayer session with Jesus, they didn't have the energy, not realizing what was happening within them, and they couldn't do what Jesus wanted them to do. Let me go here. And they failed him. Look at, look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Then he goes away again. Third time. And then verse 45. He came to his disciples and said, sleep and take your rest. Take your rest later on. See the hours at hand. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So it's almost as if Jesus is saying, these are my words. I'm not saying he said this. These are my words. Y'all ain't no good. I guess I got to do this by myself. But you're the group that says, I got you, Jesus. I got you. If everybody else turn their backs on you, we will. And they heard Peter. If, if you die, I'm a matter of fact, I'm going to die. Before you die, I'm going to take the hit. And this is the rest of the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jesus, okay, cool. All we're going to do is pray. And if they can't pass the prayer test, <laughs> you think they would die for him? You think for one second that they would die for him? Let me jump ahead to the story, right, to the rest of the story. Then we can draw some applications, then I'm going to move on real quick because you guys are real quiet right now. You're like, ooh, oh, this will feel good. Um, <laughs> Judas shows up, and Judas and the, the chief priests and the Roman soldiers, 
they arrest Jesus, right? And, and, then, and then lock into this. And then John, in his rendition of this narrative, say all the disciples drew their sword. And they're saying to Jesus, should we engage in battle right now? Should we fight? And Peter said, I told y'all, I got this. He pulled his sword. He goes up front. Bam. See, I stroke first. I told, and Jesus said, it wasn't about the sword. It was about you going with me in prayer because I'm not engaged in physical battle and you missed it. You failed the prayer. You think I want your sword? And here's what he said. Hey, listen, in my prayer, I could have called 12 legion of angels. I wish I had somebody in here. I don't need to raise a hand, and I don't need you to raise a hand with me. I just need you to go to daddy like I'm going to daddy, and we adjust to God's will. But you couldn't do that. And watch the text. Verse 56 says, when they took Jesus, the prophecy came true. They all took off like bats out of hell. You get it? And watch Peter. He trying to be incognito. Where y'all going? He going to run too. But he going to follow Jesus from a distance. And he looking. And he found himself in a crowd watching. And one of them little girls in children's ministry <laughs> saw him. Hey, aren't you Peter? Girl, don't tell nobody. I don't know him. Then somebody, aren't you Peter? No, must be somebody cloned me, you know. <laughs> You can't, I don't know him like that. Then he did it again a third time. And you ought to read all the synoptics to get this picture, right? And the cock crowed. And the author says, then Jesus turned around and looked at him. He didn't think Jesus knew where he was and what he was doing. Just like a lot of us fool ourselves into thinking Jesus don't know where we were or are <laughs> and what we're doing in the moment when we're assigned to pray. You kind of get what I'm saying, right? Then Peter saw himself. Here's the point of all this. If we're going to be a house of prayer, I'm going to say to you, we have to stop sleeping when it's time to pray. Let's sleep mean whatever you need it to mean. Wednesday night we allocate some time to prayer and that is the least attended service but the majority of us will say, God, not me. I'm going to never deny you. And we justify it by saying this. I pray at home. I pray by myself. And Satan's sitting there saying, I told him to do that. Oh, y'all missing this. And they justify their spirituality in their own private closets, but don't see the importance of coming together. Where the scripture says, where it is what? Two or three. Y'all know it? And the power that a community of believers can have, you're going to see this in a little while. If we can ever understand the importance of prayer and the assignment that God has called us to do. So whenever we fail God, we discredit his name because here's what the point says, right? The absence of prayer positions us for failure. And because we don't pray, because we're not sold out to God like that, when it comes time for us to defend the name of God, guess what we do? We mess up. You ever been in a conversation and a cuss word slip out? And the only time you catch yourself is if there's another believer there? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. If it ain't no believers there, if everybody around you cussing and you slipped out a word, you don't say, oh, man, I don't know where that came from. You just act like you're one of the boys or one of the girls. But the moment you see it, oh, if I, girl. Can we be honest this morning? And we mess up. Uh, and, and however we find ourselves failing, going off on our spouse, going off on a coworker, doing things we ought not be doing is because we are not obedient to the command. Let me go here, then I'm in this. Well, well, let me, let me if, if, if you have a chance, let me just go here. Let me quote this. We don't have time to go here. If you were to go to, 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 to 1 Peter, right? Here's what 1 Peter says, 5. Be sober, be vigilant. 
because the adversary, the devil, is like a what? Roaring lion seeking whom he may do what? Devour. Very, very important that you not miss that. So you've got to hear me say this, right? Is that the goal of his goal is to discredit the name of God. So he's following you and he's following me. And he's given us a million and one excuses to not do what God called us to do. Knowing that when we don't do it, we're positioning ourselves for failure. And failure is inevitable. And Jesus already prophesied, you will fail if you don't do this. And we miss that. We miss that. We miss that. We miss that. Come on, is this making sense? We miss that. Here's how Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, I put on the whole armor of God, right? Yeah. The rest is not against what? Flesh and blood against principalities and spiritual rulers, evil in high places. Put on the whole armor of God. So look into this. When the day of evil comes, you may be able to do what? Yeah. And it says stand, and it gives to the whole spiritual armor. Here's how it ends that series of things. Pray with all kinds of prayer. Y'all know it. And we miss that. Okay? So you might be saying, okay, how could the disciples have prevented failing Jesus and be who God would have them to be? I'm glad you asked this. Because here's the third thing I want you to take away from this message and we're going to stop. Okay? A consistent prayer life is key to living a life. And I'm going to add this word, free from sin. A consistent prayer life is key to living a life free from sin. Preacher, where are you getting that in the text, right? Look at, go back to verse, um, verse, what's it, verse 40, right? Verse 40, here's what it says. And he came to the disciples and he found them sleeping and he said to them, Peter, so could you not watch um, with me one hour? Then here's the instruction. Peter, here's all I need you to do. Disciples, here's all I need you to do. Restoration, here's all I need you to do. Watch and pray so that you may not enter into temptation. Watch and pray so you may not enter into temptation. And, and, and then I'm going to hit this next part. Here, come on, say watch and pray. Say it again. Say watch and pray. I kind of spoke to my leadership a little bit this morning, and I listened to what they talked about, um, what prayer means and the importance of prayer. And I'm comfortable in saying all that is correct and all that is accurate. Let me tell you some of the things that they were saying. Is that they were saying, even if you shop in, that when you're about to pay your bill, you need to pray. You kind of get what I'm saying? As you wake up in the morning to go about your day, you need to pray. As you engage people in the community, you need to pray. But here's the mistake we say, we pr- the mistake we do. We pray, and there are times when we don't pray. We don't know what it is to go about in our daily life 24-7, never going in and out of prayer. We don't know what that looks like, right? So here's what Jesus says to Peter. The, what's, what's nuanced in, in the grammatical phrase, watch and pray, is that it's written in the present tense. Here's what the present says, right? It, it says, the action has begun, but there is no assessment of the conclusion of the action. So in other words, you're always praying presently. There never is a time where you stop praying in the present. So it's not that you walk here, then you're out of the present, you could stop wherever I find myself is right now and right now is the time for prayer. If I go over there, it's right now and right now is the time for prayer. If I go over here, it's right now, it's time for prayer. And then he says this, watch. Be vigilant. Why? Your enemy is like a roaring lion because he's waiting for you to stop. So he's following you. Patrick, he was saying that Katani and I do the same thing, right? We wake up in the morning and we pray. And while we're holding hands, come on, because I ain't going to forget Saturday you wasn't feeling too good. And you said, you pray. <laughs> Leave my wife alone, amen. And the enemy's watching us pray, right? And then when we get done praying, he says, okay, that's cool, that's cool. And then when we stop and we go away, he says, okay, okay. Let me see how long that two seconds going to last. And the moment she comes out of prayer, he goes in with her. And the moment I come out of prayer, he goes in with me. Because the only time I mess up is when I'm not 
praying. You get it? Does this make sense? So Peter, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Know where he's at and never stop praying. And let me, let, me, let me apply the same grammar to watching because both of them are present indicative, right? And never stop watching. Never stop praying and never stop watching. Why? Because that booger don't sleep. He don't slumber. He's looking for you to mess up. And if you mess up, you discredit my name. And the only time you fail is when you mess up, when you're not praying. And he's watching and looking, watching and looking, watching and looking. And Jesus says, the problem is this, Peter. The spirit is willing. The problem ain't your spirit. It's your flesh. Because your spirit don't tell the flesh, I'm tired. The flesh looks into the spirit and says, I'm tired. The spirit is the breath of God in you. That thing could go and go. And go and go and go. And I wish we had time to go in all the scriptures, right? The reason I don't pray, pray is not because of my spirit, it's because of my flesh. The reason I don't show up on Wednesday is not because of my spirit, it's not that I don't think about you all, it's because of my flesh. And my excuses is this long. And I have to own this. The devil reminds me that I missed one to add to the list. And that's when I fail God. I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop Come Wednesday, y'all, we're going to talk about this. Those disciples made that mistake, let me summarize, one time in their leadership career. They made that mistake once. Granted, it happened three times in the one instance, but never again did they make that mistake, right? Because they learned a lesson in their deceit and failure of Jesus, the importance of watching and praying. So watch this. Jesus dies, and they still had abandoned him. Only Peter, James, and John hang around with the missionary society wanting to know what's going on. Because the women were saying, hey, he said he's going to get up three days, so let's at least go check. Then three days later, they go to the grave, and they notice he's not there. And the angel shows up and says to the women, Peter, and James, and John, he's gone ahead of you in Galilee, just like he said. They go to the rest of the guys and say, hey, Jesus got up. And they're like, man, shut up. That ain't happened. They're still doubting. Y'all don't believe me. Here's Thomas. Hey, the only way I'm going to believe this, I need to put my finger in his hand. And I need to put it in his side. I need to see him. Even in his resurrection, they still doubted. But then he gets up. You got to read this. Hangs out with them for 40 days. Then he says this before he leaves to go to heaven. I need you to go to Jerusalem. And don't leave that upper room. Stay there and pray. Second time he told them that, right? Guess what they said? Hey, y'all, stop everything we're doing. Prayer is important. Remember what happened the last time? We messed up. When you get to the book of Acts, it's a lot more than 11, right? They done chose Matthias. The, some commentator says 120. We don't know what the exact number was, but lock into this. For days, no one slept. They were crying out to God. Acts chapter 2 happens. The Holy Spirit come, comes. And listen to this. After one prayer meeting, Peter preaches one message. 3,000 people got saved. Say it again. After one prayer meeting, I missed this part, where everybody was there. Peter preaches one message, and 3,000 people got saved. Let me pause this series by saying this. If we're waiting for vision to happen, let's get in the upper room and cry out to God. Are you hearing me? 
And, 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 and I said to our leadership this morning, the church can't go nowhere if the leaders aren't there. If you got an excuse for why you can't come, that's your business. Please understand that when you don't show up, you're failing God. Just hear that much because the command is we serve a God. We're, we're in here to bring people to our relationship with God. We're in here to, to restore this community to our relationship with God. It's not about my personal accomplishments or your personal accomplishments. All that's going to pass away when we get to go with to be with God, the question is going to be, what have you done for me? Imagine if we can come together under one roof, one time to cry out to God, the power of God that's going to reign now. We're saying, Lord, heal the sick. God, raise the dead. God, deliver people. God, restore marriages. God, do the miraculous. It takes us not sleeping, but praying. Can you not watch with me for one hour? Jesus said. Not all night, even though that's great, but one hour? And you wonder why marriages are failing? You wonder why you can't get off that stuff? You wonder why finances are messed up? You wonder why one hour? I got you, God. Two minutes into the prayer. Y'all just say this, say, Lord, help us. us. Amen, yeah. I'm I'm saying, please hear me. I'm not preaching at you. I'm talking to myself as your leader. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm talking to myself as a leader. Some things got to change. It's got to change. I can't go in and out of prayer. It's got to be my 24-7. While I'm working on the computer, I'm praying, God, what would you want me to type? While I'm eating, Lord, what do you want me to eat? While I'm speaking, God, what would you have me to say? Where I'm going, Lord, where do you want me to go? While I'm putting my schedule, God, how do you want my schedule to be put together? I don't keep no downtime so the enemy, while he's watching, can see me idle. Bow your heads. Pastor Katani, come on. Here's what I want you to do. Just like I had to do myself. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive me for sleeping. Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time to sleep, there's a time to wake, there's a time for every activity under the sun. So God, as we talk about being committed to prayer and not giving the devil a place to work, forgive us for missing you, God. So as your word has gone forth this morning, we repent of missing you. We repent of not having a sense of urgency to come out corporately to experience you. We repent, God, for the maladies that's come out of us, the things that we've done when we were in the flesh because Galatians 5 and 16 says walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the desires of the flesh so whenever we see flesh we know we've stopped praying and we discredit your name forgive us God for the discreditation and the numerous times that we've done that not only is the enemy looking but the world is looking in you've got to emanate Christ you've got to walk like you in this earth realm we really do love you, God, and you know that we love you. And you still grace us because you know the Spirit is willing, but the issue is the flesh. So teach us to allow the Spirit to strengthen the flesh. Teach us how to do that. And we do that by feeding the flesh more than we feed the Spirit. So God, if that means sometimes turning the television off just to fast, show us how to do that. If it means reading your word more so we can learn how to spend time with you, fasting with your word, show us how to do that. If it means getting closer to you, show us how to do that, God. We're here to learn and to be who you would have us to be, God. So move in this place. Move in this place as we give this to you.